بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Praise be to Allah the Lord, cherisher and sustainer of the worlds, the most gracious, the most merciful, the master of the day of judgment. All praise is due to Allah and Allah's peace and blessings be upon his last messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his pure family, his loyal companions and all those who follow them with righteousness and good deeds until the day of judgment. Amin. Dear brothers and sisters, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum as salam. Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma relates a story that he was riding behind the messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he said to him, O oh, young man, shall I teach you some words, words of wisdom, words of advice? Then the messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave him few words that carry deep meanings. The Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu told him, be mindful of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and Allah Almighty will protect you. Be mindful of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and Allah Almighty will be with you. If you ask, then ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala alone. If you seek help, then seek help from Allah Almighty alone. And know that if all the nation gather to benefit you with something, they will not be able to benefit you except with something that Allah Almighty has already prescribed for you. Sure. And if the nation gather to harm you with something, they will not be able to harm you except with something that Allah Almighty has already prescribed against you. The pens have been lifted, the pages have dried. Few words that carry guidelines and education <coughs> and matters of your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, your understanding of the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, your sincerity towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and your strong faith with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We'll speak about the first part very quickly. Be mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah Almighty will protect you. If you observe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah Almighty will protect you. What does that mean? How, how do you be mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? How can anyone be mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Being mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or observing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it means that you obey the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you abstain from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as forbidden, and you do the duties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that are required from you, your duties toward Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and you honor and respect and establish the rights and regulations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In short, and very quickly, avoid anything that might anger Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Allah Almighty feels angers. And what angers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as the Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, what angers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is when a believer does what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forbidden. When a believer commits what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forbidden, that is when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gets angry with you. So the first one is avoid causing anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by avoiding committing anything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forbidden. Now, uh, this does not stop anywhere, it's in everything. So you have to be careful not to listen to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forbidden, not to look at what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forbidden, not to say what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forbidden, not to commit or do anything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forbidden. We might take it very lightly nowadays. Again, listening to something or looking at something, not a, not a big deal. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Holy Quran, verily, the hearing, the sight, and the heart, all of these a person will be accountable for, will be responsible for. He'll be questioned about all of these. The hearing, the sight, and the heart. Even what is inside the heart, what is that? That is the, the evil thoughts or the bad thoughts that you have, the envy, hatred, and uh, jealousy of someone, etc. All of these, he said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, all of these you will be held accountable for. We're not speaking, uh, speaking about major things or committing a big things. Even little things you have to be aware of. If you are sincere to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you have observed that. Even your tongue, whatever you're speaking about, speaking, saying something, could be very little. But even those little words, they could be very harmful and very damaging. 
to relationships, to people, etc. And thus, they will anger Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, he gave a guarantee. You guarantee him something, he will guarantee you something. The Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa said, anyone who can guarantee for me what is between his jaws and what is between his legs, I will guarantee for him paradise. Two things. You can guarantee it. The Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, I guarantee for him paradise. Guarantee, 100%. What is between your jaws? That is the tongue, your speech. Be very careful about it. Not to hurt anybody, not to say anything wrong or harm anyone with it. And what is between your legs? That is the private part. Not to transgress in, in relationship or in, in, uh, in real life. So if you avoid these two, the Messiah Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, if you guarantee these two to me, I guarantee for you paradise. This is how serious it is, yes. It is not a little thing. You might take it very lightly. I'm saying a joke about someone or narrating a story of someone. Regardless, whatever it might be, in both cases you'll be a loser. If you are saying something wrong about him, whatever you think of him, it might not be true. Or if you are relating something that is true already, 100%. In both cases, saying something bad about someone, something that he does not like. In both cases, you are the loser. Get forbid. The hero. This is the seriousness of it. In another hadith, the Messenger of Muhammad Sallallahu was telling Mu'adh radiallahu anhu about the pillars of the religion and the details of the religion. Then he told him, shall I tell you about something that compromises, comprises all of these, consists of all of these? Something that accommodates all of them, all of the religious guidelines. He said, yes, O Messenger of Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Messenger of Muhammad Sallallahu said, hold his tongue. He held his tongue and he says, protect this. Protect your tongue. Subhanallah. So Mu'adh was surprised. He said, oh Messenger of Allah, are we questionable about what we talk? <laughs> it's just a talk. It's nothing, it's just a little talk. He said, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi said, woe on you Mu'adh. What is the thing that brings most people face down in hellfire except their tongues? Most of people will be punished in the hereafter because of their tongues. We take it very lightly nowadays, get forbid. This is something that is very serious. Because yes, you might not think of it, but the effects of it in the society or in the other person or in a relationship can be devastating. If not to realize it. It's extremely dangerous. Saying something bad about someone that you love, someone that you close, someone of family or a stranger, doesn't make a difference. All of that is not uh, allowed in Islam. Also be mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in eating from halal. Your rizq is halal, your spending is halal, your relationships are halal, all of these things, all together. Furthermore, part of the observing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to observe the rights of people. Avoid transgressing about the rights of people, about your employees, about the business hour, about the uh, work benefits, about the whatever it is in your life that belongs to other people. The rights of other people has priority in Islam. Because here, unless they forgive you, unless they forgive you or give you permission to do that, it's not permissible to transgress against their rights. And it is one of the things that you'll be accountable for in the hereafter. The problem is, in the hereafter, they will take their rights back from you, but they will take it from your hasanat, if you're good deed. So that is the biggest problem. So they will take from your salah, from your song, from your charity, etc. And the hereafter does, if they continue to take from that, a person will be a loser, God forbid. That is the serious. This is very lengthy, but in general, as we have said, observe what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala likes, avoid what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, does not like, and thus, you will be, inshallah, among those who, who are mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, there are some things that enable you or help you in being mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. First one is correct knowledge about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you understand your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the grandeur of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the majesty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when you understand it correctly, it will give you a motive. It will make it easier for you to correct your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Furthermore, be mindful that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is observing you all the time. Everything. Whatever you say, whatever you think, whatever you do, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is observing that. And already the angels are writing all of that against you. All of it. For or against you. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Holy Quran, whatever 
whatever is uttered from speech, except that there are already observance and writing down of it. Everything. Scholars mention that whatever a person utters is registered in the book. Even if it's normal speak, that does not include rewards or sins. For example, come and hear and take and how are you and things like normal things that you say in life that do not carry any rewards. All of these, uh, even probably hello and how are you, probably this includes some rewards. Greeting someone, you get rewards. But things that do not include rewards, even those are registered. However, at the end, they are abolished, they are removed. The thing after that is to have good expectation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Good expectation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is very important that the relationship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala contains two things. Love and hope for the mercy and forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. At the same time, you have to respect and honor Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and fear angering Him. When you combine them together, inshallah, that is when you will be in the straight uh, path. Last point here is to pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant you this, to make you mindful of Him. That after each salah we say, we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allahumma anni ala dhikrika wa shukrika wa husn ibadatik, oh Allah Almighty help me. In worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a good way, remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a good way, to do the best in ibadah. That is something else also, the dua of the Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa when he used to pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, oh Allah protect me from in front of me, from my behind, and from my right, and from my left, and protect me from my top, and protect me, I seek your refuge from getting harm or being overcome from beneath me. So total protection from all uh, sides. Now the benefits, what is in it for you? When you are mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what do you get? First thing, as the Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa said, if you are mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah Almighty will protect you. That is the first thing. So Allah Almighty will protect you yourself, protect your religion, protect your belonging, your money, your property, your children. All of these, there are hadiths and ayahs in the Holy Quran to explain all of these. Very quickly, for example, in the story of Al-Kahf, you know the two orphans, two young kids. Their father died long ago, he kept for them some money, it was buried. But it was about to be exposed. There was a wall on top of it and it was about to fall down. If it fell down, people will see it and maybe somebody will steal it. They were very young. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent a prophet and a righteous person, Musa alayhi salam al-Khadr, to erect that and correct that building. They didn't know what is in it. Just do that. And they did it. Later on, al-Khadr explained to Musa alayhi salam why. Now what is it in the explanation? Their father was a righteous person. That is the only reason. Their father was mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah Almighty protected the kids for him and protected their money for them. Allah Almighty sent even a prophet, a messenger from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help them. Yes, if you are mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will protect you in all of that. Even in your own health and in your own benefits. And you know many of the scholars, mashallah, they are a very old age and yet they are enjoying all of their uh, abilities. This is one of the great blessings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And here, there is one interesting story. One of the scholars, he was very old, one of the early scholars of the Salaf. And one day he was with his students and they found a patch of ground that they have to jump over. It was a bit wide. So he was the first to jump. It was high and wide. Yet he jumped and they feared for him. They were trying to stop him. After he finished, they said, we fear it for you. I mean, you are an old person. So it's very dangerous uh, doing that. He said, we have protected these limbs for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when we were young. And Allah Almighty protected them for us when we are old. I've already observed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in it. I've not done anything wrong with it. So I'm not fearful. I know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will protect them for me. And that is a deep understanding of the, the relations. And says, yes, I am mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So uh, that. the second uh, point after that is that when you observe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will get the love and mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah Almighty will be there for you when you are in need. As the Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said. Be mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah Almighty will be with you. Whenever there is anything, whenever there is any uh, need, whenever there is any calamity, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be there for you to help you and protect you. There are many other points, but very quickly, we'll conclude with the last one. Allah Almighty will guide you to understanding the realities of this life and the hereafter in a better way, to be clear to you. You'll enter understand with certainty. Nowadays, it's very difficult to tell someone, for example, all oh, this is just temporary, all oh, this is nothing, it's useless, just like a dream, the real life is in the hereafter, right? But if you 
are mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all the time, that becomes a certainty in your heart. It gives you peace and tranquility in your heart, better understanding. You do not, you do not, you do not feel over emotional or overreactive. You do not overreact to problems or calamities that happen in this life. You understand? This is, not, this, is this life. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explained by the end of the hadith, if the whole nation, all people, if all people, all humanity gather to benefit you with something, they want to do any, any kind of service or benefit to you, no matter how little it might, as the Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu said, they will never be able to do except what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has already prescribed for you. It will come to you, one way or the other. And if all people gather to harm you with something, they'll never be able to harm you except with something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has already written against you. When you are mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will reach this conclusion. It becomes a reality in your life. You'll understand it. And thus, you'll be fearful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. You will do what is right all the time. You don't mind. You are going to do what is right. You don't harm anybody, but you do what is right all the time. You defend uh, the, the, the oppressed. You stand up for justice. You stand against injustice. And you do what is best for you and for humanity. That is when you are a true believer. Final point is about we are approaching Ramadan and now we are in the month of Sha'bah. Shaban is a preparatory month for Ramadan. We'll speak about uh, that in detail, inshallah, later on. But very quickly about Ramadan, the Messiah Muhammad used to fast many days in, uh, in Shaban. Aisha radiallahu anha, she said, I've never seen him fast more in a month after Ramadan than in Shaban. Sometimes he used to fast it, all of it except for a few. And in another narration, he used to fast all of it. He never fasted full altogether, but very close to it. It means most of it. Now, when he was asked about that, why? The Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, this is a month that people usually neglect because it's between Rajab and between Ramadan. Ramadan is the month of fasting and the month of, Ram of Quran. And uh, Rajab is a sacred month in Islam. So people are mindful of this, but they are not mindful of Sha'ban in between. And the Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to worship Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala all the time. He does not neglect any part uh, of his life. Furthermore, the Messenger of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi clarified that this is a month in which our deeds are raised to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. The deeds are raised to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala many times. They are raised daily, weekly, and yearly, and then once in a lifetime. The daily one, twice in a day, in the morning and in the evening. The work of the day is raised before the end of that day, before night, the work of the night is raised before the day. In another narration of the Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi this is done at the Salah of Fajr and the Salah of Al Asr. The whole work between them is raised to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. That is why it's very important to observe them. When your work is raised, you are doing something good. Also, on a weekly basis, the the work are raised twice to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Your deed are presented to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala twice a week. The Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned it is on Monday and Thursday. Monday and Thursday. That is why the Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu used to fast them all the time. So whenever it is raised, he will be fasting. The third, the yearly one, it is in Sha'ban, in this month that we are in, the whole year, whatever you have done in the past year. And most likely this is done in the middle of Sha'ban, on the 15th of Sha'ban. Because in the other hadith of the Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said that Allah Almighty, looks upon his creation in the middle of Sha'ban and he forgives all of them except for two groups a polytheist that is a non-muslim one group is non-muslim one group is muslims so polytheists those who do not believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or do polytheism and the muslims and those who have enmity with others those are muslim so you have to be careful those are not included in this specific mercy at this day, forgiveness. So one way to seek forgiveness in this is to forgive everybody and ask the forgiveness of everyone so that you will get the forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The final one, of course, is raised when a person dies. And that is the final one. Everything is closed forever and sealed and sent uh, and presented to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So uh, from my part, I forgive anyone who have done anything against me intentionally or unintentionally for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I also I uh, request from you to forgive me if I have done anything wrong to you uh, intentionally or unintentionally. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us all and include us in his mercy. And may Allah Almighty make us mindful of him and of his rights and of his regulation. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to do our 
duties toward Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the best possible way and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among those who are successful in this world and in the hereafter Ameen wa sallallahu ala sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam taslima kathira